What you're looking at are the pump. There were many problematic weapons that were added in Elden Ring's DLC. However, one of the most insidious examples is the Pada. Whereas many of the annoying weapons added were of a new weapon class or restricted to certain builds, the Pada signified the death of an entire weapon class, standing head and shoulder above everything it compares to. And despite being nerfed in patch 1.14, the nerfs were really just a slap on the wrist, not having addressed a single actual issue that this weapon has. But why is the Pada so unhealthy for the game? To answer that, let me take you back to a time before the DLC was added to set the stage. There are three subcategories of fist weapons in Elden Ring. You have the Boxers, the Smashers, and the Pokers. Every variation is very powerful, but since the Pada eventually will belong to the third category, it is the one we will focus on. The Poking Fist moveset was one of the most well-rounded and complete movesets in the game. First, you have a running R1 with reliable speed and an incredible amount of forward momentum. So much so, that it was one of the few moves that could very reliably roll catch someone who was light rolling. The rest of the viable moves were built off the running R1. Going for another running R1 keeps up the pressure if the opponent is rolling away. And the standing R1 and R2 are good options against those who mash out of hit stun. And back during the time period, the pokers had one more trick up their sleeve that made them exceedingly deadly, the running R2 to R2 true combo. The true combo was absolutely disgusting damage-wise, easily doing over a thousand damage on even moderately optimized builds. Normally damage this high comes from Ashes of War, but having a reliable burst option tied to the base moveset meant that the Ash of War slot was open to be full-on utility. The two standout ashes were Endure and Barbaric Roar. Nothing beats a versatile weapon with Endure for invasions in the consistency department, and Barbaric Roar turned the R2 into a ludicrous trading machine. Frame 1 hyper armor, enough poise to tank getting hit by a Ford Escort, and rewards being right where fist weapons want to be anyway. That is, right in your opponent's face. Needless to say, Barbaric Roar was very annoying to fight considering that it could trade almost anything, but thankfully, the move is easily punished if whiffed. Okay, we're out here looking for a good Elden Ring patch. Let's see what we can find. I bet we're gonna find a really good one. I, I bet on everything I love and own that I we're gonna get a good one right here, right now. Sup, ho? How you doing? <laughs> the poking weapons took a heavy blow in patch 1.12. The running R2 had its hit stun reduced to the point that the R2 combo no longer worked. While the usage of the pokers fell off a cliff, they were far from being bad. While the running R2 is definitely worse than the running R1, the delayed and staggered timing allowed for a higher damage option if you were certain that the opponent would panic. And since the R2 didn't combo anymore, your opponent was incentivized to roll as soon as possible, which could lead back to landing another running R1. And burst damage options could still be found, especially for Flaming Strike on strength builds and Barbaric Roar when stacking Roar buffs. However, needing a Burst Ash did hurt the defensive utility lost from dropping Endure. While certainly a painful nerf, the loss of the combo didn't kill the poking weapons. But the DLC certainly did. Brother, uh, What's that? What's that, brother? Enter the Pada, a weapon that could very well have been crafted by Satan himself. The first thing you'll notice about the weapon is how well endowed it is. The Pada is long. Like, really long. Who the hell thought this was a good idea? The frankly unnecessary range of this thing makes roll catching an absolute breeze, even against light rolling players that you do not live anywhere near. 
On top of that, moves like your R1 and Barbaric Roar R2 will very commonly hit your opponent even when you feel like it shouldn't have landed. I can't tell you how many times I thought, huh, how did that hit, when I should have been punished for bad spacing. As it turns out, strapping claymores to your wrist and calling it a fist weapon might not be very balanced, but the depravity is far from over. The Pada also can have Ashes of War put on it, meaning it slots onto every single build. With minuscule requirements to boot, you might be wondering what the downside of this weapon actually is. If you thought, maybe it does a lot less damage since it's so long, well congratulations because you're never getting hired onto the balance team making that much sense. The Pada has a very similar attack rating to the other Poking Fists, usually being slightly lower or slightly higher than the Qatar based on your build and stat spread. You might now be wondering, if the range is long and the damage is good, then maybe the attacks are slower or something. Well congratulations because you are wrong. Not only is the Pada's frame data identical to the other Poking Fists, but for some ungodly reason, it is the only Poking Fist that retains the running R2 to R2 True Combo. Despite being the apex of this weapon class in every conceivable way, the Pada effectively has more killing power than any other fist due to still having this 3-hit combo. Why? Why make a weapon that outshines all of its competition all the time? Absolutely unreal. The Pada is easily the most destructive weapon added to the game, whereas weapons like the Smith Script, Shield, and Backhand Blades are very obvious in how they ruined PvP from day one, they have been nerfed due to the amount of backlash from the community. I believe the reason the Pada has mostly remained unchanged is because it hasn't received the same level of vitriol from the community. I believe the most likely nerfs that could be deployed are to remove the three hit combo and make the Pada's moveset some amount slower than the other Poking Fists to make up for its range advantage. There's only so many more patches this game will get before the meta will be solidified, so hopefully the balance team makes the needed changes before it's too late.